There is nothing more fundamental to the development of societies and ecology than geography. Geography dictates weather and plants and creatures, resources, and the flow of information, all of which govern how people develop and the stories they tell about themselves. In Isaya, every society has stories about the three continents, the upper continent, the lower continent, and the abyss, because each continent hangs over the last. Well, our northern cultures tend to view the ice of the abyss with awe and fear, and the upper continent as a source of fire and dragons. Southern cultures tend to see the abyss as hell, and the upper continent as heaven. But unlike the north, the south relies on the sun for agriculture, and the night sky guides their seasons. And northerners are often sunk into long, unpredictable winters, and rely on the magics of the abyss to survive. The availability of resources, and the constant, inevitable pressures of the geography, is what separates our cultures. But what is it about the upper continent? that gives it such power over the shape of the world. At the crown of the world, the upper continent sits atop colossal stone pillars, miles high, tall as mountains, and untraversable. Humans have only recently acquired the technology to ascend the upper continent. It's called Krisig in the north, and Krisigia in the south. But in both lands, it is regarded as sacred and taboo. With the pillars of the continent virtually impossible to scale, only airborne plants, winged creatures, and their passengers could possibly dream of inhabiting it. So far, only a few human ships have made it up there. According to Telethenian natural philosopher, Rierian Fetasius Vanianri, the upper continent is a garden of paradise. Fields of dandelions stretch for miles, their seeds carried on the other winds, she says the first birds to rise to the upper continent were albatross-like birds who used the upper continent solely to nest, and then their corpses carried the first insects, fleas, and worms. But then, without predators, the birds grew massive in size and lost the ability to fly. They became geese as tall as two-story houses, and their predators? Terror birds, even taller than them, who ran them down and ate them. Crisigia. Isin sora starena sera, senia vanus calian serila cope, tadiumi, tarisia asinavus vasa serancian, soris uftila cope. Ecclesia ne is a crinianian dacian fios a felion or fitia. Crisigius de isian sora serila piata, senia neu. Donea de Calios Vasatien, Ukrainus aftas Kenilia Vigian, Fiti. Ivana Sera. Neu Nea de Calios Vasatia. Below the upper continent lies the aptly named lower continent, the land humans have had access to throughout all of my history so far. We have grown up in the shadow of the upper continent, where water meets the land. The north is largely beneath the upper continent, and in its shadow, a harsh, cold land with snows year-round and light only in the dawn and dusk. In this state, we have grown black plants that photosynthesize the red light. 
creatures that were more likely to ritualistically remove their eyes to see east to gain an ecological advantage. Olivine showers rain from above, olivine being the green stone that grows only high up here in the mountains, and then is washed away with the winds and the rain. The people here have pale skin and flat noses and thin eyes. This reduces the glare of the sun when it does appear on the snow and the effects of the cold. Furthermore, one of the most common animals here are the rheumatures, who dominate because we find them useful. We have raised these fluffy creatures who can climb sheer cliffs even with their round cloven hooves for their fur and milk and sometimes even for their bones. We have learned to cope with this lightless land with our stores of frozen food and though the more isolated cultures lead to ruthlessness and individualism amongst our communities. That being said, in a land like this, loyalty is still valued. Furthermore, due to our reliance on magic, removing eyes is not something that's so quite so taboo to us. We rely on magic and technology to stay warm and alive, and we accept death. We have no fear of him. But the South has a much more temperate and even climate across its whole, meaning not only can agrarian societies thrive, but farming techniques in the East are relevant to the West. And even more than this, the climate means information can easily pass from East to West, creating a more homogenous value system built on these similar technologies. The growing unity of the South in the last 400 years is not at all surprising, and is unfortunately a threat to us here in the North. Thus, the broad strokes geography and ecology of the lower continent governs the geopolitics of most of humanity. But the last continent may actually define the shape of the world more than any other. At the root of the world lies the Abyss, an underground realm composed of a magical crystalline substance called Ys. Ys is the source of all the world's magic. The Ys that we may just see erupts into the world through structures called Ys springs, much like hot springs or geysers, except as sources of Ys. In order to see Ys, however, a creature must sacrifice their eye to the Abyss, and sometimes the Abyss will eat your eye with no response. My father always said we are born of death and east, and to the abyss we will return. The abyss is both the source of all life and death. This is probably why the Sagan believe that Asarali, their god of the abyss, is the god of magic, secrets, and death. Sometimes, creatures are born with the ability to see east in one blind eye. Failing this, however, even creatures as dumb as insects will ritualistically remove their eyes to channel east in the patterns required to cast spells. <laughs> Ys is the basis of all of our magic. Ys in circles and curves to fly. Ys crashing into each other to burn. In the south, natural born sphonic witches are the only ones allowed to wield magic. To remove one's eye is considered an abomination, as is using magic for evil. The abyss itself was seen as the home of Eris, goddess of chaos. While the Aftercratoria, the leading government in the South, has grown increasingly tolerant of magic since Telethon's conquered most of it over the last 400 years, Inquisitors of the Ecclesia Dies still hunt sonic witches who are misusing their magic. As you can see, throughout the world, people's opinion on magic differs wildly. In the North, we respect the Abyss because we need it. In the South, they fear it because it adds unnecessary complication to their lives. But regardless of anyone's attitude towards it, the abyss is a central pillar of life across our world. 
Every culture in Usea, human or demon, sunless or sun-kissed, has stories about our three continents, and ultimately, disagreeing on these stories, disagreeing on the fundamental truths of our world, is rooted deep in the ground itself, in these continents. And until such a time when we have the technology to equalize these resource differences, there will not be concordance. There will only be war.